University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello, the hurly-burly of the first round is done. 16 matches lost and won. And out of the 28 teams who qualified to complete for glory, it's the 14 winning teams plus the two survivors from the playoffs who will continue to entertain us in the second round, which starts tonight. Now, St Peter's College, Oxford, had a bit of a walkover in their first round match against a rather Trappist team from Pembroke College, Cambridge, ending with a winning margin of 225 points to 50. St Peter's had abundant opportunity to flaunt their knowledge of the novels of Kazuo Ishiguro, waterways named after explorers and actors who didn't turn up to receive their Oscars. The St Peter's team have an average age of 25. Let's meet them again. Hi, I'm James Hodgson. I'm from Oxbridge in West London and I'm a graduate student in statistics. Hello, I'm Seb Braddock. I'm from Toinet in Geneva, Switzerland and I'm reading for a BA in history. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Nick Williford from Maynardville, Tennessee, and I'm reading for a Master's in History. Hi, I'm Laura from Stockport, Greater Manchester, and I'm studying Biological Sciences. Now, Emmanuel College, Cambridge, narrowly lost their first-round match against Glasgow University by 175 points to 200, but then had a convincing win in their playoff against King's College, London, a game they won 235 to 140. On both occasions, they've been confident in what they do know and cheerfully indifferent about what they don't. Last time performing well on female military leaders in ancient China and the anatomy of fish. With an average age of 20, let's meet the Emmanuel team again. Hi, I'm Connor. I'm from Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and I study politics. Hi, I'm Vidan from there. I'm from Kings Lynn in Norfolk, and I do economics. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Daniela Cagini. I'm from Warwick, and I'm studying English. Hi, I'm Ben Harris. I'm from Bath and I study geology. Shall we just crack on with it? Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for 10. In the mid 1740s, engravings of illustrations by the Dublin artist Susanna Drury brought what geological formation to international notice, prompting Neptunist and Vulcanist theories of its origins? It's located close to the town of Bush Mills in County Antrim. Uh, Emmanuel MacDonald. The Giant's Causeway. Correct. <laughs> right, the first bonuses are on people born in the northern French town of Valenciennes. Born in 1684, which prominent Rococo artist works include the Music Party and the Elysian Fields, both of them in the Wallace collection? Is that the Nate for Watteau? Uh. Could you give it a shot? Yeah. Watteau? Watteau is correct. Born around 1333, the chronicler Jean Poissard wrote a lively account of which popular uprising. Notably, he took pains to outline the egalitarian ideals of John Ball, one of its leaders. Is that, is that, um, is uh, that Peasants' Revolt? revolt? Yeah. Is it? I think. Peasants' Revolt? Correct. During the Fourth Crusade in 1204, Count Baldwin of Flanders took part in the sack of which city, after which he was elected... Latin Emperor. They, they stack, stack Constantinople. Yeah. Constantinople. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Gold vermilion, couple colour, rose moles, and dapple dawn drawn are among hyphenated expressions coined by which poet? St. Or... Peter's Cooper. Thomas Hardy? No, but you lose five points. Born in Essex in 1844. Uh, Emmanuel Nair. Is it Browning? No, it's Jared Manley Hopkins. Right, ten points for this. In different branches of science, meanings of what four-letter word include a device for transforming chemical to electrical energy and the basic structural and functional unit of an organism? St Peter's Hodgson. Cell. Cell is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on the Scribblerus Club, an informal club of authors and satirists of the early 18th century. Which Scriblerian's works include the English text of Handel's Asis and Galatea, the co-authorship of the stage fast Three Hours After Marriage, and in 1728, the libretto of the Beggar's Opera? Dryden? No, it's John Gay. Secondly, a Scottish physician and mathematician, which of the Scriblerians is credited with the creation of the figure of John Bull? Mm -hmm. 
No idea. It's John R. Buthnot. And finally, which Dublin-born scribblerian was the author of A Modest Proposal and A Tale of a Tub? Uh, Jonathan Swift. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Since 2010, Cabomani has been recognised as a fifth species of which odd-toed ungulate mammal, similar in shape to a pig? Found in tropical forests, they have distinctive snouts that extend... St Peter's Cooper. Warthog? No, you lose five points. ..that extend into short, fleshy proboscis. Uh, Emmanuel Cagini. Capybara? No, they're tapirs. Ten points for this. What five-letter name connects the author of the 14th-century English poem Confessio Amantis, an area of outstanding natural beauty in West Glamorgan, and an English cricketer who made more than 8,000 test runs between 1978 and 1992? Uh, Emmanuel Cagini. Dante. St Peter's Williford. Piers. No, it's Gower. OK, ten points for this. After a ruminant mammal, what term denotes the typographical convention in which uppercase letters are used in the middle of a string of lowercase letters, particularly in proprietary or commercial names? Uh, Emmanuel Nair. Uh, camel text? Well, except that camel case is correct, yes. <laughs> right, here are your bonuses. They're on World Health Organization lists of essential medicines published in 2017 which outline the minimum medicine needs for a basic healthcare system. Firstly, clofazamine, dapsone and rifampicin appear in the WHO list with a recommendation to be used as a combination therapy for treating what disease? Malaria. Malaria. High blood pressure, maybe? Mm, it doesn't sound like... Malaria. Go Malaria. Malaria? No, it's leprosy. Secondly, which drug is listed both as a medicine for anxiety disorders and as an anti-epileptic? I need the commonly used generic name rather than any proprietary name. OK, so something like Prozac or Xanax. Is that, yeah, Z Z those are the, those are the yeah, yeah, proprietary like, like names. Oh, um, it, clorazepam really? is an anti-anxiety yeah, medicine. Okay. Clorazepam? No, it's diazepam. Ah, oh, mm -hmm. damn. And finally, three drugs are listed as anti-migraine medications for the treatment of acute attacks. Two are paracetamol, and acetyl salicylic acid. What's the other? Um, so that's paracetamol and aspirin. Maybe ibuprofen? Yeah. yeah. Ibuprofen? Correct. <laughs> right, we're going to take a picture round. For your picture starter, we've spliced together the opening lines of two sonnets to make a new pair of lines. For ten points, name the two poets whose work has been combined. Both sonnets were written in the same decade. Emmanuel Cagini. Wilfred Owen and Rupert Brooke. Anyone like to buzz from St Peter's? St Peter's Cooper. Uh, Owen and Siegfried Sassoon. Siegfried Sassoon. That's correct. We'll see the whole thing now. <laughs> Sassoon is the first one, Owen is the second. So you get the picture bonuses. There are three more sonnet mashups. Again, in each case, I need the names of both the poets whose works have been combined. Firstly, two sonnets published 40 years apart. OK, 40 years apart, so what sort of era do you think? Mm. Maybe mid-19th century. Sonnets? Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Browning and Brooks. No, it's Milton and Dunn. Let's see what they would look like. Secondly, two works published 12 years apart. No clue. No idea there. Christina Rossetti and Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Finally, two sonnets published in the same decade. That's Keats okay. and Shelley. Yeah, yeah, okay, go on. Keats and Shelley. Correct. Yeah. We'll see them untangled. <laughs> okay, ten points for this. Which Nobel laureate is the subject of the Pope of Physics, a 2016 biography by Gino Segre and Bettina Hoylin? He gives his name to element number 100 and ah. along with... Emmanuel Cagini. Fermi. Fermi is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on the year 1991 in feminism. Firstly, after two decades of radical action, do women feel free? This is the opening question of which 1991 book by Naomi Wolf. It discusses what Wolf calls the last best belief system that keeps male dominance intact. I think that's the beauty myth. Yeah, I've read okay. a book by Wolf. The beauty myth? It is, yes. 
Subtitled The Undeclared War on American Women, what is the single word title of Susan Faludi's work of the same year? It examines the spread of the idea that feminism's gains have led to increased unhappiness for women. Uh, uh, depression? It's on patriarchy. Patriarchy? No, it's backlash. Also in 1991, Kathleen Hanna published a manifesto for which underground feminist movement known by a two-word term. The term is usually used more narrowly to describe the music of bands such as Hannah's own Bikini Kill. Punk rock. Punk rock? No, it's Riot Girl. Oh. Ten points for this. My child, you are about to become a great king. Do not imitate my love of building nor my liking for war. Which king said those words to his... St Peter's Williford. Louis XIV. Correct. You get three questions on misreadings and mispronunciations. Firstly, for five points, in 2014, a newsreader on Indian State TV made headlines for pronouncing which world leader's name as 11. I need the full name of the political figure in question. Kim Jong-il? No, it's Xi Jinping. Understandable in such sense, I suppose. <laughs> Ten is a frequent misreading of the name of which Galilean moon of Jupiter, named after a priestess of Hera in Greek myth? Io? Io? Yeah? It, it looks like ten, the word it looks like number ten. Io? <laughs> Io is right. If in a quiz, for example, a person misread the regnal number of an English king as I-I-I and the question referred to the start of the Hundred Years' War, what would the regnal name be? Henry? Yeah. Henry Ill? No, it would be Edward. Right, ten points for this. From the name of an ancient southern province of India, what term denotes a family of languages spoken by more than 200 million people that includes... Emmanuel Nair. Um, Dravidians? Dravidian is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on German Grand Duchies, Emmanuel. Firstly, Darmstadt became the capital of which Grand Duchy in 1806? A present-day federal state of the same name encompasses a wider territory, including the city of Frankfurt. That's schleswig Holstein. No, it's Hesse. Oh, of course, Hesse. yeah. Hesse? Hesse is correct. Secondly, for five points, what name precedes Schwerin and Strelitz in the names of two grand duchies created at the Congress of Vienna in 1815? The historical region in question is now part of a federal state in northeastern Germany. Mecklenburg. Correct. And finally, which former grand duchy joined Württemberg after World War II to become a federal state? Baden. 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 Baden is correct. We're going to take a music round now. If you're a music starter, you'll hear a piece of jazz music. For ten points, give me the name of the artist singing. Emmanuel MacDonald. Armstrong? Yes, it is Louis Armstrong, yes. <laughs> that recording is often cited as one of the first examples of scat singing. Your music bonuses are three more examples. Again, name the singer for five points. Firstly... Ella oh, Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald? That's correct. Secondly... Billy Holiday? No, that's Sarah Vaughan, Julia Bop, and finally... I ain't got no body. It's not, not Miles Davis. Miles Davis? Miles Davis? No, it's Sammy Davis Jr. Ten points for this. Following his experiments at Columbia University during the 1940s, the biochemist Erwin Chargaff gives his name to parity rules concerning the composition of what macromolecule? St Peter's Cooper. DNA. Correct. <laughs> so, St Peter's, your bonuses are on the architect David Adjaye. In 2013, Ajay began work on a new national museum on slavery and freedom at Cape Coast Castle in which African country? Sierra Leone? No, it's Ghana. Ajay's notable residential projects include affordable housing in which New York neighbourhood? 
once a hub of the Harlem Renaissance. The area gives its two-word name to a hip-hop group and a record company. Washington Heights. No, it's Sugar Hill. And finally, designed by Ajay, the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C., became the newest addition to which museum group when it opened in 2016? The Smithsonian. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. The Act of Parliament, known as Titulus Regius, was passed to support the right to the English throne of which king? It declared as illegitimate the issue of Edward IV and Elizabeth Woodville. Emmanuel Nair. Richard III. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on astrophysics. On the 17th of August 2017, two detectors picked up gravitational waves from the collision of what objects in a galaxy about 130 million light years away? Black holes or supermassive black holes? Well, just, I think it's just say black, black holes, holes they might prompt. Black holes? Black holes? No, it's neutron stars. Um, the simultaneous detection of high energy photons from the same source confirmed that colliding neutron stars are responsible for a subset of what phenomena abbreviated as GRB? Gamma ray bursts. Gamma ray bursts? Correct. The afterglow of the explosion was picked up in visible light and other wavelengths, showing that such events distribute heavy elements into space. This afterglow is known by what term that includes an SI prefix? Is it volt or joule? Joule. Or do we have a clue? No. I'm afraid we don't know. It's killer Nova. Right, ten points for this. Windy is an epithet given to which Commonwealth capital situated on a sea passage that forms a gap between mountains? It is home to the National Museum known as Te Papa Tonga Rua. St Peter's Williford. Wellington. Wellington is correct. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses on the poet and playwright Dorothy Code Hewitt. The Man from Mukunupin is one of Hewitt's many plays to be set in which country? Her birthplace in 1923. Canada. No, it's Australia. What is the title of Hewitt's play of 1971 based around the life of a character named Sally Banner? The title refers to a scene featuring Sir Lancelot in Mallory's Mort d'Arthur. Hmm. No idea. It's the Chapel Perilous. And finally, Hewitt's early play, This Old Man Comes Rolling Home, is set in the suburb of Redfern in which Australian city? Uh, Melbourne? No, it's Sydney. Ten points for this. First bestowed in 1818, what two-word title is held by the imam of the Ismaili Nizari sect. Its fourth ah. holder... Six Emmanuel MacDonald. The Aga Khan. The Aga Khan is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on British prime ministers and their published works. Firstly, which future prime minister was the author of A Defence of Philosophic Doubt, published in 1879? Oh, future... So it could be... Well, if it's future... It's a bit too... Salisbury, maybe? Tried, yeah. Salisbury? No, it was Arthur Balfour. Yeah. Also published before he became Prime Minister, whose works include Maxton, John Smith and Where There Is Greed? Um, Disraeli wrote a lot. No, that's not him. But um, is it... Um, try... Ramsay MacDonald? Ramsay MacDonald? Ramsay MacDonald on John Smith? That's interesting. No, it's Gordon Brown. Oh. Finally, who published Music, A Joy for Life, two years after his period as Prime Minister ended? Should we try this really there? Um, I don't... I don't, I don't know. Try Ted Heath. He's Churchill wrote a lot? Well, no, no, no. Ted Heath was an organist. Ted Heath? It was Sir Edward Heath, yes. <laughs> Ten points for this. The Himalaya and the Amalthea are groupings of the satellites of which planet its four largest moons were discovered early in the 17th century? Uh, Emmanuel Harris. Jupiter. Jupiter is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on chemistry. In each case, give the formula of the named chemical. For example, table salt would be NaCl. First, chloroform or trichloromethane. C-H-C-L. 
CHCL3? Correct. Secondly, naphthalene. <laughs> C10H8. C10H8? Correct. Finally, hydrogen cyanide or prussic acid. HCN. HCN. Correct. We're going to take another picture around now. If your picture starts, you'll see a photograph of an athlete. Ten points if you can give me his name. St Peter's Williford. Roger Bannister. It was Roger Bannister, yes. <laughs> that was taken when Bannister broke the four-minute mile in Oxford in 1954. Your picture bonus is three more athletes who've broken significant barriers in their discipline as ratified by the IAAF. Five points for each athlete you can name. Firstly, I want the name of the athlete in the middle here. Can't, can't remember. That's Tommy Smith, who was the first to run 200 metres in under 20 seconds. Secondly... Is that Florence Griffith Joyner? That's correct. Flo Jo, the first woman to run 100 metres in under 10 and a half seconds. And finally... Yeah, yeah. Jesse Owens. The first long jump over eight metres in Berlin. <laughs> right, ten points for this. In 1888, his final lucid year, which German thinker wrote the ah. case of... Emmanuel MacDonald. Nietzsche. Correct. <laughs> Three questions on recent winners of the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film for you, Emmanuel. Which country won the Oscar for the 2007 film The Counterfeiters and the 2012 film Amour? Oh, um, Spain, something? Um, it's not French. Spanish word for love. No, I know it's French, but I think that mm. I think the director Spain. might be Spanish. Spain? No, it's Austria. Yeah. Secondly, which film directed by Paolo Sorrentino starred Tony Servio as the 65-year-old journalist Jep Gambadella? Yeah. No, I don't. I, I, no, I don't know. Is that something? Spotlight. That was the great beauty, or la grande bellezza. And finally, what nationality is Ashgar Farhadi, the director of the Oscar-winning films A Separation and The Salesman? Isn't it Iranian? Yeah, I tried Iranian? Yeah. Iranian is right. Ten points for this. <laughs> Answer as soon as your name is called. What multiple of pi is within a hundredth of the integer 22? Uh, Emmanuel Nair. Seven pi? Seven is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on reverse chronology, Emmanuel. Based on an earlier play, which musical by Stephen Sondheim and George Firth starts in 1976 and ends in 1957? It was unsuccessful on its first Broadway run in 1981. I think it's Follies. I think it's Follies. Follies? No, it's Merrily We Roll Along. Secondly, which 1978 play by Harold Pinter uses reverse chronology to chart the nine-year-long love affair between Emma and Jerry. Oh, there's the birthday party. There's... Oh, I've been looking up into recently. Try that. Just the birthday party? No, it's betrayal. Concerning a trip to India for Sue Ellen Mishki's wedding, the betrayal was a backwards episode in 1997 of which US sitcom? OK. It's not Friends, is it? It's no. <laughs> um, <laughs> Frasier? Try Frasier, yeah. Frasier? No, it was Seinfeld. Ah. Three and a half minutes to go. Ten points for this. Which major British river is formed by the confluence of Dare Water and Potrail Water, not far from Betuk Summit on the West Coast Main Line? Ah. Emmanuel Mayer. Seven. No, anyone want to bust from St Peter's? Ah. St Peter's Braddock. The Trent. No, it's the Clyde. Ten points for this. The subject of a successful private prosecution for obscenity in 1967... Which cult novel by Hubert Selby Jr. is the source of... St Peter's Cooper. Last exit to Brooklyn. Correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on Asian dog breeds. Distinguished by its loose, wrinkled skin, which Chinese breed of dog has a name that translates as sandy coat? Sharpe. The Sharpe? Correct. What breed was the dog Hachiko, regarded in Japanese culture as an exemplar of fidelity? His story formed the basis of a 2009 film starring Richard Gere. Mm. No clue. It's an Akita, apparently. 
noted for its long, silky hair. Which breed was formerly known as the Lhasa Lion Dog? The Lhasa Apso? No, it's a Shih Tzu. Right, ten points for this. Which household object gives its name to a test developed in 1970 by the psychologist Gordon Gallup Jr. that gauges the self-awareness of animals? Uh, Emmanuel Cugini. Mirror? Mirror is right, yes. <laughs> you get three questions on last lines in dystopian fiction. Adapted into a film in 1990 and a television series in 2017, which dystopian novel of 1985 ends with the line... Are there any questions? Handmaid's Tale? Correct. Preceding the appendix on Newspeak, what four-word sentence ends George Orwell's 1984? Um, he loved Big Brother. Yeah. He loved Big Brother. Correct. In a chapter omitted from the first US edition, which novel of 1962 ends with the words, You, oh, my brothers, remember sometimes thy little Alex that was, Amen and all that cow? Oh, that'll be that... Clockwork Orange. Yep. A Clockwork Orange? Correct. Ten points for this. Ours is essentially a tragic age, so we refuse to take it tragically. These are the opening words of which novel first published in Florence in 1928? I'll tell you, it's Lady Chatterley's Lover. Ten points for this. Which country shares a short frontier with China along the Wakhan Corridor? Uh, a narrow... Emmanuel Harris. India. No, you lose five points. A narrow strip of land demarcated in the 1890s as a buffer Peter's between Wolliford. empires. Afghanistan. Correct. You get a set of bonuses this time on national flags. According to legend, which country's flag fell from heaven in 1219? Denmark. During... Denmark is correct. Secondly, which single colour formed the entire national flag of Libya from 1977 Green. to 20? Green is correct. Diagonally divided into yellow and orange-red triangles, which kingdom's national flag has a white dragon in its centre? Bhutan. Bhutan. Bhutan is correct. Ten points for this. Marvellous Murchiston was an epithet given to which Scottish polymath born in 1550? His birthplace... <laughs> and at the Royal St Peter's College, Oxford, have 120. Emmanuel College, Cambridge, have 195. Well, St Peter's, you never really got a chance to get hit your stride, did you? But uh, thank you very much for joining us. Again, I have to say goodbye to you. Emmanuel, many congratulations. You know, you survived under the tried and trusted method of losing your first match. Yeah. <laughs> so congratulations. I hope you can join us next time for another second round match. But until then, it's goodbye from St Peter's College, Oxford. Goodbye. goodbye. It's goodbye from Emmanuel College, Cambridge. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>